Cannabis is an important medicine in managing the refractory pain and it is also very useful medicine in palliative care setting. So, what is cannabis? It's a plant based medicine and which is being increasingly used in palliative care setup. It's very useful role in addressing the pain, control the refractory pain, not managed by the other ways. It improves the nausea, that is very, very important. That it can be used for the treatment of the nausea and it also improves the appetite loss. It reduces the anxiety and other distressing symptoms. You can understand that all these symptoms are very distressing in a terminally ill patient. So, in palliative care setup, the cannabis has very important role. So, in the palliative care setup, we talk about the enhance the symptoms, means the improvement of the symptoms. The if you are comparing with the other traditional drugs, as I mentioned earlier, that uh, compared to that of the opioids, compared to that of the NSAIDs, compared to that of the coanalgesics, so these medicines are very nicely tolerated and uh, it can be used to manage the symptoms of the other drugs which are there, particularly the opioids. And uh, it acts in endocannabinoid system. So like the endogenous opioid, we also have the endocannabinoid system where the endocannabinoids bind with the cannabinoid receptor and thereby it has all this important action of the pain relief, improvement of the nausea, the improvement of the loss of appetite, so all those can be taken care of. So there are two active ingredients. One is your KC, means delta 9 tetrahydrocannabinol. So cannabinol. This is one very active ingredient. Another active ingredient is cannabidiol. So we are talking about the THC, tetrahydrocannabinol and cannabidiol frequency. So THC, it acts mostly on the central nervous system and it is high -value. So because of the THC, it is having the addiction potentials. It is being used as a psychoactive drug, it is a recreational drug. But again, THC has two other very important properties. It manages the pain, it improves the nausea, stimulates the appetite. So again, we cannot ignore THC because THC has other important properties which is important for managing the palliative care patient. And cannabidiol, it's mostly work in the peripheral system and it reduces the inflammation, anxiety and pain. So, in our body, as I told you earlier, that there are like opioid receptors, cannabinoid receptors known as the CB1 and CB2. CB1 is found mostly in the brain and the spinal cord and CB2 is mostly found in the peripheral and THC binds mostly the CB1 and the CBD mostly binds with the CB2 but also has the action on the others as well. There are three different forms of the cannabinoids. One important is your planned derivatives and this is mostly used therapeutically. But the two others are completely synthetic, like synthetic opioids and naturally occurring cannabinoids. But this is the most important which is used therapeutically. And uh, there are lots of amples of literatures. And uh, very important in the literature what is found that its efficacy in managing the pain, its efficacy in managing the nausea and the appetite loss. Another very important observation in this from this literature is that that the, in cancer patient, the chemotherapy induced nausea can be nicely managed by the cannabinoids. And it also effective in the HIV AIDS related your cachexia. That can be improved with the help of the cannabinoids. And there are lots of data supporting. So this is a long list of literature, just only few. A uh, lot more literature is needed, but again, we need more and more literature to support, to convince our policy makers so that the more and more uh, availability of the cannabinoids. So there are different forms from the, you know, the dried flowers, oils, tinctures, capsules. So uh, all these are different forms are available and the different routes of administration. Inhalation, it is mostly used for the recreational purpose. But advantage of it is that it's very immediately active. While it's oral, it's longer acting, longer lasting, but onset of action is again slower. It can be used as a capsule, oils, or other forms of the edible forms. Sublingual is a little bit 
quicker onset of action compared to that of the oral and uh, tinctures and drops can be used in moderate to severe pain and topical also if somebody is having the headache somebody having the back pain so the topical applications of the oils the creams are available which can be used topically which having the local regional action as you can remember the cbd works on the peripheral reduces the inflammation reduces the pain so that property can be used for the topical applications so doses guideline is very important we are always apprehensive of its side effects and very important principle is start low and go slow so what is the starting dose starting dose is for the thc it is 5 mg per day and uh, uh, 2.5 mg per day sorry and cbd 5 to 10 mg per day and gradually gradually up escalate the dose the thc highest dose is 25 to 30 mg highest dose cbd highest dose is around 40 mg so you need not reach that level but if we are titrating the dose gradually over the period of time uh, like 2.5 mg THC, 5 mg of the CBD if you are increasing it by around 5 days, 3 to 7 days then the chances of the side effects are extremely rare so you should be starting with a lower dose and gradually gradually escalating the dose so that our patient will be safe what are the common side effects? dizziness is common but apart from that the other uh, the less serious uh, side effects which can be seen particularly if we are increasing the dose rapidly the serious side effects are the cognitive impairments drug interaction but you have to remember there is no specific contraindications for this cannabis it is so safe but a patient who is having a lot of comorbidities dependent on so many medicines and uh, we have to start very lower dose and gradually gradually slowly try treating uh, towards the higher dose and we will not be having any major side effects issues in this Legal considerations is again very important, ethical consideration is important and we have to remember the earlier uh, cannabis was not available uh, but now available but in the form of the Ayurvedic preparation. So as a allopathic doctor I cannot prescribe it but I have two options. One is I can ask my uh, Ayurvedic doctor colleague and ask them to have a prescription or these drugs are available because it is an Ayurvedic doctor medicines over the counter so I can ask my patient to directly collect from the uh, the medicine counter and that is the way we can help still now there are around the, the stigmas are also very important so medical ethical issues we have to overcome with more and more patient awareness program so patient's perspective again patients are scared to use it because of the stigma because of the fear of the psychoactive effects but as if we can counsel properly that the, the risk versus benefits the benefits is uh, out is the uh, the risks and we have to explain the patient and gradually gradually if we are increasing the dose there is no problem patients should be having the benefits of these medications so end of the life consideration is very important there it addresses the anxiety depression fear of death so it's very useful drug in uh, the end of the life for its psychological support improves comfort with refractory pain and the overall well-being by improvement of the nausea, increase of the appetite, so during the end of the life these medicines can be proven to be very very valuable medicines in the role of the palliative care. So we have a few commonly asked questions. One very important question is that how we differ from the traditional treatment. So again, the it uh, works by the endocannabinoid system by working, acting on the CB1 and CB2 receptors and it don't have the side effects of the common side effects of the opioid medications so in a patient who is receiving the high doses of the opioids to take care of its pain we can start cannabinoids and gradually gradually we can reduce the doses of the opioids and the opioid side effects can also be taken care by the cannabis second important question is that uh, what are the active ingredients how it works as you already mentioned thc and cbt and they work on the cb1 and the cb2 and uh, end of the life, it is very useful drug because it is taking care of the psychological aspect, it is taking care of the pain, it is taking care of the, uh, the nausea, it improves the appetite. So altogether, end of the life, it's very important. So the, in summary, cannabis offers significant potentials in palliative care, addressing the range of the symptoms and improving the quality of the life. So that is the most important part. Without significant side effect profile so it can be used and uh, the take home message for all of us that in terminally ill patients this is a very valuable drug it's very safe drug 
we just need to titrate it properly and the patients will be getting benefit of the cannabis. So thank you very much and thank you very much for allowing me to deliver these lectures in front of you.